Hey guys, it's Jim here, and welcome back to another video. Today we are learning about lock data, teleport, and TP, and this is the episode where it is mostly about the command changes to 1.10. Now, while lock data may not have changed really, teleport and TP are now two separate commands that wasn't really a thing in 1.8 or 1.9, so we are going to go ahead and go over what that was. So, this ep so first episode we went over Teller, Execute, and Title. Second episode, we went over Phil, Clone, and Seplock. The third episode, we went over Summon, Entity, Data, and Effect. In the fourth episode, this episode, we are going to be going over Block, Data, Teleport, and TP. Now, next episode will be, I wrote to be determined there because basically it's going to be based off of what you suggest. So if I get suggestions, then those will be what we are going to learn in that episode. However, if I don't get any suggestions, then it will just be whatever is, seems to be next on the list. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start with Block, Data. And this is my secret thing that we're going to use to learn about uh, teleport and TP later. But for now, so block data works very much so like entity data. Most blocks, however, don't store data. So if I go to block data and just check that block, you'll notice that block is not a data holder block. However, if I take a look at the block data for a furnace, you'll notice that it gives me some information. Now I actually ended up storing the information up here, but what we're going to take a look at really quick is we're actually going to go ahead and um, we are going to basically grab ourselves some items to put in the furnace so that we could take a look at how it works. So we're going to grab a blaze rod and we are going to grab a blaze spawn egg, um, but I forgot about ambient lighting being enabled. What we're going to do is we're going to put a blaze rod there and the blaze spawn egg there and um, we are essentially going to actually no no let's, let's let's do that a different way really quick let's also grab some wood um because we are essentially going to also add something in the third slot because by adding different items in different slots we will be able to then manipulate the slots and change what is in the slots so this is really useful for map making because you could uh get viewers to see some pretty interesting stuff all right so we're gonna run this command again which will update it and now what we could do is we could basically just copy this and now uh, in our clipboard we have the most recent version of the furnace that we have copied. So you'll notice first off here, if we go to our items array, which is what's holding all of our items, we could see here exactly what is in what slot. So slot 0b seems to be the top slot there, so that right now is holding our blaze spawn egg. So let's go ahead and change what's in slot 0b. Let's change it to, say, Bedrock, because that sounds fun. And sure, we'll do... Uh, actually, you know what, we're going to also try and glitch this out a little bit. So one thing that I posted on Twitter the other day was that you could basically end up breaking um, it if you change the counts here. Um, for now, I'm going to try and change this to 256. I can't remember, honestly, because it's been a really long time since I messed around with this. Um, but anyway, so that was our first slot. Now we go to slot 1. And we are going to go ahead and replace, um, let's see here if it'll work, the blaze rod with, uh, with a furnace, why not? Yeah, we're going to put a furnace there, and we are going to, and let's also set it back to 64, and we are going to go ahead here, and for our last item, we are going to go ahead and... Once, this go, once you're able to go ahead and navigate through this, it can be a bit tricky sometimes. Uh, oh, you know what I just realized though? We need to fix something here. <laughs> so because there is a tag on the previous spawn egg item, we don't want that to be occurring because by having a tag on the item, it's going to try and apply the tag to the spawn egg and we don't want our blaze spawn egg to try and be implementing into, uh, into our bedrock. So... Give me a minute really quick and I will go ahead and fix that. You'll notice there's also cook time and burn time. If you mess around with those, you get some pretty weird effects, which can sometimes end up screwing everything up. So uh, just know that don't do this if there are items you actually want to keep because you're going to lose them otherwise. All right. So we are going to have it output a dragon egg. Um, and let's try set the... Uh, count to negative 1b. I don't know if this will work, but we'll try here. Let's take a look now. Um, if this will work, however, let's see if it gives us an error, and if so, we can go ahead and work through it together. 
there are unbalanced curly brackets. Um, that's not good. <laughs> that's definitely not good. Um, all right, we're gonna go ahead and debug this right on camera. All right, we have an open curly bracket there. Items array. Open square, open curly, close curly, close curly. Um, it looks like we have, for some reason, an extra one here or something. There we go, let's try that now. There we are. <laughs> so now you will notice here we have zero bedrock, negative one dragon egg, which is also glitching out, and uh, 64 furnaces inside of our furnace. Also, if you click and click on these, nothing will happen because it just breaks. Another thing you might also want to try playing around with is trying to actually take items out of it. Interestingly, what happens if you put a hopper under it is that the items uh, will sometimes just disappear. It really, it really acts oddly, and we don't really know why it does that, but it's fun anyway. And of course, if you break the furnace, um, if we give ourselves a diamond pickaxe here. I don't think I've gone over Gib yet this series, so if you guys want me to go over Gib, let me know down in the comment section down below. And one second, guys. Alright, I am back, and now we are going to start going over Teleport and TP. By the way, I should mention, block data is not just for furnaces. I'm pretty sure command blocks have block data. So if I, you'll notice if I check the block data of a command block, um, there's all sorts of information there. And you could do that with other, with other specific things as well. So if you guys want to go ahead and play around that, then go ahead. But as this is basically a beginner command block tutorial, so we're not going to be going too far into block data as this is a more complicated command. Alright, next off we're going to head into TP. So TP is probably what you guys are used to in terms of teleport commands, and we're going to go ahead and check that out. So here we have our villagers, and we're going to go ahead and check something out. So if we go TP at E, one block above, you'll notice, you know, we're, we all seem fine, that's, that's, what, you're, that's what we're used to. Um... However, and I'm actually going to reset our villagers really quick here. Uh, oh, actually, there's one more thing I need to go over here. If I set it to just myself, um, you'll, they'll, you'll find this thing called rotation. So rotation is basically where you're facing. So, oops, you'll notice here, if I'm looking straight up, uh, this number right past this line that says facing east right here, negative 49.2, negative 90, basically what I see when I'm facing straight up. And actually, let's do negative 90, negative 90, so that's what it appears to be. So if we just teleport ourselves to where we are, but negative 90, negative 90, there you go. You'll notice we're all of a sudden facing up. So you could actually use this uh, in maps as well to like make people look around. And it is a pretty helpful thing. But we are going to go over to teleport now, because we have basically covered all that TP is. And also next episode, guys, if you want me to go over selectors, which is like at E, type e goals, and at P, and etc. Just let me know down in the comment section below. Alright, so we're going to go teleport at E, one block above. And you'll notice they all get teleported to me. Let's try that again really quick here. So instead, we're actually, instead of just going relative, we're going to go to 15 blocks above. So you'll notice we all get teleported together 15 blocks above where I was standing, which creates a pretty interesting uh, effect of sorts. It's, it's quite an odd thing you will find, but it's, it's pretty... it can be a helpful command. I personally just prefer using TP, but you could kind of use this almost as an execute of sorts. Um, so, you know, instead of doing now execute Wait up games, at its current location, TP, at E, um, 10 blocks above, the, or something like that. Basically, making it teleport uh, according to you, you could make it teleport uh, according to you using just slash teleport. And again, you have where they're facing, but it's not super complicated. 
So, actually, this has been a really short episode. We're only about 10 minutes in. For you guys, that will actually... Actually, no, it'll probably be about the same amount with the intro, etc. Since I had to cut that small portion out. But... Uh, if we go ahead here, we have covered fully blocked out of teleport and TP. So if you guys want me to go more in depth with one of the commands in this episode, let me know down in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to see every single video of these when they come out. I'm going to try to release them every Wednesday from now on. So if you guys want to see those, of course, just subscribe and leave a like. So I know that you guys are enjoying these because if nobody's enjoying them, I don't... Why would I make the videos? It's, I do them because you guys enjoy them and I want to help you. So that, I mean, that's pretty much all that I make these videos for because I know how to make these myself. So it's not like I'm making these videos to help myself. I mean, while they do help a little bit with practice, I, you, you get the point by this point. But yeah, guys, so let me know what commands you want me to cover in the comment section down below. Subscribe to see every new video when it comes out. All you need is an email and or subscribe. You'd, it's not super complicated. And it means, and if you go ahead, uh, if you're on desktop and you click the gear icon next to my name, you could make it so that it'll send you an email every time I upload a video. And if you are on mobile, you could press the bell icon next to my name. And this will make it so that it'll go ahead and send you a notification every time I upload a video. Which is pretty dang awesome because I know I do that with my favorite YouTubers because I want to know exactly when those videos come out so that I will be able to watch them and uh, benefit from them pretty much right away. Um, so, I think that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, I, I just keep, I'm just dragging this video along. So guys, once again, I hope you have enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Bye!